My name is Yudha Benatar, aka Sidebrain. I'm an Ambulton certified trainer, and this is also the first time showing my face in any of my videos, so this is my face. Okay. I began a lot of questions on how I made the beat using the Nintendo controller. So thank you for all the uh, questions, and uh, I hope this helps. So the controller need to be plugged to the computer somehow, usually through USB. For example, I too, uh, this controller I already bought with a USB plug. You can search for um, Nintendo USB controller or Nintendo USB uh, gamepad. Uh, the Dreamcast arcade stick, if you checked out other, the, my other videos, I use this. I bought a converter on, uh, online and converts it to USB. The power glove, I actually had to open it up and change uh, the, the Nintendo plug to USB plug. Uh, and by the way, I'm sorry I haven't posted any videos about the power glove yet. If you want to check it out in action, you can ch uh, search Dubspot. Dubspot Yuda, Dubspot Power Glove, Dubspot Sidebrain, whatever, and also post a link so you can check it out. Sorry about that. Um, after your controller is connected to the computer, the next thing you're going to need is uh, software to convert the messages this controller sends to something your music software can understand, usually MIDI. So I'm also going to post a couple of uh, links for softwares. Uh, some of them are free, some of them are uh, in need to buy. Um, I'm using Max for Live, which is Max MSP, a visual programming language built in Ableton Live, and I used Max for Live to build my converter that converts converts it to MIDI, so I can use it in Ableton Live. So let's check out uh, how I made that beat in Ableton Live. Okay, so inside Ableton Live, um, I have an instrument track, and. What starts off the instrument track is the Nintendo controller Max for Live device, which is what I talked about. This is the converter that convert the HID messages, the human interface messages, the, con the Nintendo controller sends to MIDI, so we can use it in Ableton Live. Um, so, for example, let me close this. When I play my controller, I also have visual feedback, and it sends MIDI out. We can see here in the, in the instrument track, chains. So let me fold this, let's open up the instrument rack. I have three chains, main kit, which has a drum rack, and two lids, which we're going to talk about in a second. So the main drum rack, I only had eight buttons to play with, so you see only eight pads, but you see also multis, because I layered uh, different samples together. So if I open up the chain list, open up the inputs, outputs also, so we can see, so for example, on this pad, I have kick and a bass, okay? Um, the bass, I just played it on my MIDI keyboard and resampled it and took it to simpler. I uh, just have a snare. I have a shaker, and on, but this shaker also allows me, if I hold it long, to also play an extra pad, which I, again, resampled using a synthesizer uh, and just gave it some uh, space at the beginning to be played if I only want to play the shaker. And obviously, I've, I've adjusted the volume envelope uh, accordingly. Um, the next kick has three sounds, has a kick, has a shaker, and has a bass, which is the same bass, I just um, took it up to semitones. It's not, I'm not sure why, but I took it up to semitones. Okay, this is first kick and second kick, nice. Now I have two pads, which once again, I played them, recorded them, and brought them into Simpler. Um, they're both in the same choke group, okay? If you don't see the choke group, open up the inputs, outputs of the chains. They're the same choke groups, so they will cut each other out and they will never play at the same time, uh, or else it will be a mess, so it's very important. Uh, then I had four different effects, um, which are in the selected start button, which, once again, I resampled. Uh, the cool thing about here is that I've added also a pitch envelope, so it, it matters how long I press the button. So if I press it short, and if I press it long, nice, so it gives me a couple of variation of effects. So that's the main drum kit. Now, we have the leads also. Now, the leads, I don't have, I only have the Nintendo controller, so I had to figure out a way how to play a lead only on those eight buttons while I'm playing the actual beat. 
So if we go to the lead one, I've used uh, several MIDI effects here. So the first one is pitch. That's because if we look at the main kit, uh, I have all the pads here on C1, C sharp 1, D1, and so on, which are very low notes. So I had to bring it up three octaves just to bring it to a, a normal uh, playing octave, a melody playing octave. I've added the velocity MIDI effect, which uh, give it a tiny bit of randomness to the, uh, to the velocity. Arpeggiator, which only repeats it twice, so it's only going ta-ta, ta-ta in uh, 32 notes. Ta-ta, ta-ta, that would give it that 8-bit quality. I've added the random MIDI effect to send random notes to the scale effect, which will keep it on in key. And strobe is just the synthesizer that I used. It's from F Expansion, Decam Synth Squad. It just it doesn't matter. You can use whatever synthesizer you want. This is the synthesizer I used. And a tiny reverb. So if I close that chain, let's open up this one. And I'm, I'm going to play my Nintendo controller. It doesn't matter which button I hit. It's going to create a random melody. So I did the same thing with lead two. Okay, same thing, maybe uh, small adjustments, but basically the same, just so I have more variation. And I've also, the last thing I did was um, going into key mapping mode, which will map your computer keyboard to anything you want and map um, the, the chain activators so um, I will have control on the arrangement of the beat. I'll start off just with the beat, turn on lead one, and then turn off lead one, and I've also mapped um, the effects. So I have two types of effects in the select and start buttons. And, and that's basically it. Um, I'm gonna put this to download the kit. I'm sorry guys, but I'm not gonna put the converter, the Max for Live device, because I'm not sure all of you have Max for Live, and it's not ready yet for commercial use. So once I finish this uh, this device, I'm gonna put it on maxforlive.com. Uh, and you guys, if anyone has a Dreamcast arcade stick, I've also built um, a device to convert a Dreamcast arcade stick into MIDI. So if you have that, you can download it from maxforlive.com. And, and that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And check out the original video if you haven't yet. And if you have any questions, you can uh, write them in the comments or uh, email me or uh, whatever. So, um, Happy New Year.